It's early preseason, but I'm high field fuck. Jimmy G buckets, gets buckets. Oh my goodness. Give me the hot sauce, Bill Fuck. Give me the hot sauce. What are you doing, Dragon? Did you not get the memo? Brand new edition of the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. Stacey King is here. I'm here, but no whispers. I think he was eaten by an alligator in Florida. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I tell you what, I talked to Whispers the other day. Yeah, Whispers. He lives in like a. He has, they call it villages or, or bungalows or something. Yeah. So the neighbor is leaving. I don't because it's like it's like I call them duplexes. So he lives on one side, another person on the other side. So his neighbors are leaving. He's like, hey. That house is for sale. I said, Whisper, I, I love you, boy, like a brother, but I think it's too no, close. Dude. I can't be living there. I can't you live there. You don't want to be retiring no, next no, to Whispers. No, I don't want to be right next door to you. I, I might be in the same neighborhood, Mark, <laughs> two blocks away, but I don't want to be right living right the wall separating us. Oh, <laughs> hell to the no. His, uh, his shorts are here in memory. I think we can yeah, smell them over there. Oh, we can Lord. stand them up in the corner. Oh, no, you know what? what these, these shorts need to be. These, look at America. There they are here, America. These little dirty, crusty shorts. Oh, man. These shorts Mixed need to, martial arts. Yeah, just put them in a glass case, man. <laughs> just put them in a glass case. The guy never won a martial arts contest. He's 0-6. He got beat by five women. And the sixth one, he lost to a little person. A little tiny little person. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Four foot six. Whisper's mixed martial arts career. So hopefully he'll be back next week. We're going to talk a lot of Bears this week. Yes. Uh, our, our buddy Mark Grody is going to join us in our next segment. I know Bears fans are very excited about what they saw from Caleb Williams and the entire team, really. They beat the Buffalo Bills 33-6, to so we'll talk Bears in our next segment. But let's start out talking about the Olympic basketball teams. Both men's and women's came away with the gold medals, but it wasn't easy. No. I mean, they almost lost to Serbia in the semis. They were down 17. They were lucky to pull that one out, and then Steph Curry hit those four threes late to beat France in the title game. I tell you what, the world's catching up. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know we can sit up there and say, you know, the dream team, you know, and compared to the 92 team, there's no comparison. Um the, the world is caught up now. I mean, there there's a lot of talented players on all these European teams. And those guys, you know, you get some of these guys out here. You look at Serbia, you know, Bogdanovic, who's a really good player in the yeah. NBA. You know, he's one of my favorite players of wise. The guy plays tough. He hit three-pointers. Uh, the game, I think, changed when he did the Carmelo, the knucklehead thing, and, I, and he did that. Uh, I think that kind of changed the complexion of the game because at first they could miss a three point shot. Yeah, they made they made fifteen three pointers in the first three quarters and zero in the fourth. Zero in the fourth. Yeah. And and the one thing, Mark, that I saw in that game where it's like the 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 pros were having a hard time getting out to shooters. Like it, it was like they didn't know they were switching and then they didn't know where the communication was. Do we rotate out to this guy? I think after about twelve three pointers, I think I thought that everybody on the team could shoot. Might want to get out there and guard people. And Joker is is the best player in the world. Well, he's such a good pass. I'm gonna tell you too. something, man. If I, if I was an all star caliber player, if I was a Bradley Beal, if I was a Bradley Beal, I want to go play with Joker. He's gonna make my game better. You, I tell you what, a guy who whose game suffered in his Olympics without Joker was Jamal Murray from Canada. Yeah, he was coming off the bench. For oh, he well, he should have stayed on the bench. He had a horrible <laughs> shooting, horrible. I think he I think he was shooting under twenty under thirty percent. From the three point line, I think he's only made like four, four out of nine, or four out of you know four out of nineteen, or something like that. But he struggled with his shot. Um, that just goes to show you how important uh, Joker is to Denver. And if you're Denver, if you if you're Denver right now, if I was you guys, his window is very short. I would go out and try to get a championship caliber team. I'd say he's got five really, really good years left. In those five good years, I go put the the guys around him that's going to put them in the championship every year while he's still there. Because once he once he starts getting injuries, Mark, and he's he's not as effective, that window closes for Denver. Yeah, I was watching the game against Serbia, and the United States was down by 13 uh, early in the fourth quarter. And then they went with the with the all-MVP lineup. They had Embiid, Durant, LeBron, and Curry, and Devin Booker was the fifth guy. And those guys locked in like it was game seven of the NBA Finals. I mean, they did not want to get embarrassed and not be able to bring the gold medal home. And Bede made a couple of buckets, and I saw him react after one where he got an and one. More emotion than I've ever seen from Joel Embiid his entire Philadelphia career. Well, you know what? I mean, look, that that was a game. If you lose that game, boy, you you go down yeah. in history. People will be talking to him the rest of your life, you know, how you let down. You guys got beat. You're not good, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but at the end of the day, you know, they found a way to win. You know, you know that whether that motivated them to win the game or not, 
Uh, we don't know. I guarantee if you ask him, they probably said, yeah, that motivated him, especially LeBron. Because if LeBron loses, everybody's gonna, it's all going to be his fault. Right. And they're not going to remember Curry was on that team. They're not going to remember anybody else. It's always going to be LeBron. You'd be called LeBron. So yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so, but Embiid, Embiid, there was a stretch in that game where Embiid looked like the best player on the floor. Now, I know the the Philadelphia front office when he dunked that ball and fell on his head almost. And oh, rolled, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, he doesn't know how to fall. They they need to hire like a, a a stunt person to teach him how to fall because when he falls, Mark, he falls like like he has no arms. Like you know, you break yourself. It's like yourself. a tree in the yeah, forest. Yeah, so yeah exactly. Crash into the ground. Yeah. He has no no way of breaking his falls. He just falls down and he crashes into people. And if I'm Philadelphia, I'm hiring some kind of stunt man to show him how to fall because when he dunked that ball, he got fouled. But he he does a lot of acting too. Like he fell, literally fell, and almost hit his head on the floor and rolled off, you know? And then I'm like, okay, this dude's gonna kill himself or kill somebody else. They need to teach him how to fall because that's why I see why he's always hurt. Yeah. And in the title game, France got within three. It was 82-79, and then Curry hit three shots, four shots wow. in a row. The last one, he kind of just heaved it over two taller players and, and found the bottom of the net. I mean, you talk about a, a clutch performance. That was his first gold medal, and he was the guy that carried him through. I mean, it was, it was amazing. He's always been regarded as the best shooter probably ever, and then he proved it again in the Olympics. Well, when this is all said and done, their careers are, are over. You know, they're going to be you know, what's really kept LeBron from being, like, it, in my opinion, the greatest player in this in his own era is Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. Steph Curry is really not allowed LeBron. Like, MJ was, like, leaps and bounds above everybody in his era. But LeBron has not been leaps and bounds better than everybody else. He's got the numbers that says that. But when you look at what Steph Curry has done and how he's elevated Golden State, then he's won more titles. Uh, you know, it was one of you know been in the finals, you know, and and won titles. And they beat LeBron. And they beat in those LeBron finals, in those yeah. finals. Um, he that's what's going to be on LeBron's you know resume is that you weren't even the best player in your era because there was other guys in your era that were just as good. You know, Steph Curry and Steph Curry's name is going to be the first one that pops up. Where would you put Steph Curry in your all time top ten? He keeps moving up the list. How high would you have him now? <laughs> oh my God, Mark! I was thinking that, about right? this earlier today. I think I've got him in the like seven to ten range. Of all time, great players. Yes, he's passed guys like Oscar mm -hmm. Robertson and, and Jerry West, Larry Bird. I think I would put Curry over Bird now. I know Mark, it's tough, but these Mark. are yeah. You I object. Against, you played against I Larry objection. Bird. So yeah. Objection. <laughs> and it's not overruled, America. I don't. I don't have Steph in my top ten. Okay. Yeah. Not, I mean, not of all time great. I have him as the best shooter of yeah, all time. Yeah. When you say the be the best shooter, he's the best shooter of all time. But Steph Curry is not defensively is not a very good defensively. They've hired him. Championships. On, he's won championship, but he's won championship with other people playing defense and, and they hide him. Mm -hmm. I, and when you see a person take Steph Curry and throw him out of the way to go switch to guard somebody, that, yeah, okay, you're not a good defensive player. I'm curious. You have Tim Duncan in your top ten? I am <sighs> just below. I, I have him. I listen, I I've got if I was to give you a top ten just off the top of my head, right. off the top, I'm not even doing anything about this. Is MJ is Larry Bird, it's Magic, Kareem, Wilt. That's five right there. Bill Russell. Bill Russell. LeBron. Six. You didn't mention LeBron. I haven't got to him yet. Okay. He may All not right. be in my top All ten. Right. All right. Might, Oscar Robinson, who All averaged right. a triple double. That's that's seven right there. So there's three spots left. Yeah, yeah. Kobe. Kobe's close. Yeah. Kobe. I would I would probably go Kobe and Kobe and, and LeBron are, are close. But that's seven, that's seven strong ones I just named. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's not easy. So, so now you go to those last three. Jerry West got to be on there. Jerry West got to be on there. You know, Elijah Wan. <laughs> Elijah Wan's right. got to be on there. Shaq. Shaq's got to be. Shaq, <laughs> Shaq's got to be on there too. But that, I already just gave you nine strong ones. It's once you get past those top six, then you can argue all night. Exactly. Yeah. Because you can put any. 10 players in that those last four spots. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. not saying America. I'm not saying Steph Curry is not a great player. He is a great player. He's the, the greatest shooter of all time. And then the NBA has had some great shooters, but he by far is the best shooter of all time. But when you're saying, is he a top 10 player of all time? I say he's the top 25. I don't know yeah. where you put him in the top 25, but he's the top 20. Listen, you go out and look at the top 75 players in the game. You know, any of those, any of the, most of those guys could be, 
anywhere from uh, uh, eight on down. Okay, there's an argument for everybody in those guys. But yeah, and you look at some of the old old time players, not old time, but uh, guys that played in the '80s and '90s. You know, Moses Malone. Yeah. You mentioned Elijah Dr. J. Dr. J. I mean, Isaiah Thomas. I mean, you got so many great players in that era. And Isaiah, like I'm saying, I would put if I I would put Isaiah Thomas over Steph Curry as, a, okay. as the as in the great the greatest conversation. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's not even being biased, not because I like Isaiah. You know, even though we've had our battles, you know, with the Pistons, I, I'm gonna get a man of respect. Isaiah doesn't get enough respect of being a greatest player as he was, okay. But I would put I would put him ahead of, of Steph Curry, and that's not slighting Steph Curry, but Isaiah was a monster. It was a yeah. monster. You had a game plan to stop him. So all you f- fans out there, give us your, your picks for the top ten, and maybe yeah, we'll, give uh, a, yeah, give us a, give us a, get, get a hold of Nick and tell me who your top ten player. Because yeah, most, and most maybe people, we'll talk about yeah, it in the last because most people born in the, the two thousand marks, yeah. they're, they're, none of them, none of those names right. I just named other than Jordan will be on You'll there. See Durant and Giannis yeah, yeah, Durant. And like that. Yeah. And but I'm saying I'm telling you, man, like those guys' career is not over. Right. Okay. So it's really hard to put them in that top ten list. Uh, Giannis, at the end of the day, when he's finished, could be in the top ten. That's right. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was a two time MVP. You know, right. could be a three time MVP at some point. Um, who Gotta knows? win another title, yeah. Gotta win another title, but he he, he could be on that list. I mean, I mean, even that top hundred is going to change. Sure, yeah. that top hundred is yeah. going to change because you you got Luca coming up. You got a lot of these guys who are who are playing now that got a chance to be uh, in that conversation. So it's really tough, America. I mean, I, I just I just named ten off the top of my head. I yeah. named seven strong off the top of my head. After that, you can you can argue. Uh, it could be Shaq because Shaq was dominant. But if I got to take Shaq. If I got to take Will Chamberlain, I'm taking Will Chamberlain. Right. The original, Will Chamberlain yeah. changed the game. <laughs> when you change the lanes and you widen the lanes out for a player yeah. and a guy's out there finger rolling from, you know, from like eight <laughs> feet away, hey, a 100-point game. Averaging 50 points in 50, a season. And, 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 and when people said all you can do is score, he led the league in assists. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't. Will Chamberlain is on every great team. Abdul Jabbar. Those guys' names are on – they've got to be on that list. I mean, mm-hmm. Jabbar was the leading scorer of all time just until LeBron broke it. Yeah. So – and that skyhook – and you knew what he was going to do every single night. You knew that skyhook was coming. You couldn't do nothing about it. You could not stop it no matter who you were. So, whew, I tell you, boy, it's – it's it's under it's great discussion. It's great discussion. One guy who might be uh, included in that conversation 15, 20 years from now is Victor Wembanyama. Oh, and he he played great in the title game. He was great throughout the Olympic tournament. But you see what he said to the press afterwards? He goes, "It was a great experience. I learned a lot, and I'm sending a warning out to everybody now." And they ask, "Well, warning to FIBA or to NBA?" He goes, "Everywhere." So, so, well, <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Kids get some confidence. Wim- you know? Wimby's feeling himself right now. <laughs> Wimby, Wimby's feeling himself. He was a quiet little shy guy yeah, coming yeah, from France, yeah. and, and then and then he started. Now he got confidence. Now, yeah. now he knows. Like, okay, I I have the ability to be a great yeah. player. Okay, and it was shown in this in this in this uh, Olympics. Like he, I'm telling you, they're coming. If they're he coming. wants to, he can get every rebound and can he can block almost listen, any shot. On a listen, drive he the changes the game. He should have been defensive player of the year. Mm-hmm. It's obvious he was the defensive player of this tournament. This guy can switch out on guards and move his feet and stay in front of guards. He can back off of you five feet and still contest your shot and block the yeah. shot. Yeah. He runs the floor, and he's getting more confidence in his offensive game. He's doing things now. He's going between his legs. He's facing guys up. He's taking you off the bounce. He's, he's working on, you know, little, little hook shots around the basket. I'm telling you, this is the year of Wimby. It's coming. The second year? Do not be surprised he's on the all-star team this year. Yeah, and do not be surprised if San Antonio doesn't take a huge jump. Right. Because you got Chris Paul there now, a point guard that's going to give him the ball. It's going, you know, they they got some leadership now. Uh they'll take some pressure off of him. They got shooters around him. I'm telling you, man, San Antonio might be a team that might take that leap that we saw Minnesota take, Sacramento take. Keep an eye on on Sac. I mean on uh San Antonio. So LeBron James was voted the most valuable player of the Olympic tournament, and the U.S. really partied after this one. I guess they were out to like 6 in the morning, and then they were leaving the club to get on the bus to go back to their hotels. There was an unfortunate incident where a young fan approached LeBron. You see this video? And he just told yeah. him to back up. Now, yeah, you've yeah. experienced it. There, there are some times where they catch you at a bad moment, but, you know, everything's filmed now. Listen, you know? there is no bad moments when it comes to kids. Yeah. There right. is no bad yeah. moments when it comes to kids. If it's a drunk guy drunk person that's different but when it comes to kids there is no bad moments if a kid stops you here it is right here yeah 
and and there's just a big body guard there. He said, back up. And yeah, and the kid's just asking for an autograph. He, yeah. he, we don't know if the kid's from France. This might be his only opportunity to ever see did be this close to LeBron James. He was this close. He was, he was touching distance from LeBron James. It didn't take LeBron James two seconds to give the kid a picture. And then he or, danced. Get yeah, and the then bus. he danced. Cause look, then he dances here. See, this is why. This is why a lot of people don't like LeBron James. This is why there's a faction of people don't like him because you go from being a, a jerk to a kid. And then you walk in, you know the camera's on you. Now you want to dance and do the jig. It wouldn't have taken you two seconds yeah. to get that kid. That could have been that kid's first time and last time ever being in the presence of greatness, a professional athlete, a professional basketball player. And he you, was probably there all night because they, yes, were, they were in the club yes, till like 6 yes. in the morning. You know? and, and so he asked you for your autograph. He got lucky and was blessed enough to get yeah. that close. And you gave, basically gave him the Heisman. Yeah. And, and get back, step back. And I mean, it, come on, man. If you listen to the audio in the clip, there's a French security guard. He goes, make way for the king. Make way for the king. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, that's all that, all that. that. Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, that was hilarious. That okay, was so funny. America, America. He was, wait, wait they, they were watching something. LeBron it was, was a French swimmer that came okay, in. Okay, so, 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 so they were watching, the, the, the basketball team was watching something. No, during were, the basketball game. It was during the basketball the game? The French swimmer came in to okay, watch yeah. the game. Yeah. So the French swimmer who won the gold medal, <laughs> Came in to the, to the arena, yeah. and they gave him a stand ovation and cheered loudly when he came yeah, in. LeBron and LeBron had got hurt and went to the locker room, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. He went to the locker room, got hurt, came back and sat on the bench, and he thought the crowd was cheering for him. Yeah. So then he hit him with the, the crown. <laughs> and, and oh, my God, dude. That, that was, was so funny. That was so cornballish. <laughs> I was like, man, will somebody tell him that it wasn't for him? He looked like an idiot doing that. Like, dude, they weren't even cheering for you. All right. Oh my God. We're gonna talk Bears in just a bit. I you never see Michael Jordan do none that. No, no. You no, never no. see MJ doing nothing like that. One one Bulls related thing I want to ask you about. The Drew League wrapped up. DeMar DeRozan scored fifty four points in the title oh game God. and his team won the tournament. But one of his teammates was Dalen Terry, and there was a nice photo we're showing you now on YouTube on, on social media. He's really taken Dalen under his wing. And Dalen's worked hard. You can see he's stronger in his upper body. If he gets his ball handling down, smooths out the jump shot. It'd be interesting to see what he can do in your Listen, three. I'm a I'm a Dale and Terry fan. He's six foot seven. He can do a lot of different things. It's all about confidence in this league and people to believe in you. Okay. He he's really taken to DeMar. DeMar, that's one thing I'm gonna really miss about DeMar DeRozan. It's not the fact that he was an all-star here, that he scored a lot of points. It's his mentorship that he had with these younger players. He, he, every team needs a DeMar DeRozan. He takes these younger Patrick Williams, Kobe, you know, all these guys, and he takes them out to California. He puts them up. He treats them like they're those little brothers. He works them out, teaches them how to be pros. He shows up at their G League games when he doesn't have to. When Iowa, you know, went and got his uh, jersey retired, you know, on a yeah, day off, he drove all the way down. Yeah. Surprise, Io. He drove yeah. all the way down there. Yeah. Wasn't prompted to do it. Just went to give his support. And that's what being a leader is all about. This is where he. This is where he will be missed in the locker room. It's the little bitty things like this, and the way he treats everybody. From players to front office to you know people that work for the Bulls organization, he's just a first class guy. Both him and Caruso, ultimate pros. Just they'll be sorely, sorely missed just off their leadership abilities. Yeah, and Demar takes that Drew League seriously. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he might be the all time leading scorer <laughs> in the Drew the League MVP, history. Fifty four yeah. points as they win the every summer. He's playing there. So congratulations to Demar Derozan. Of course, he's an LA native. That tournament is being held in Los Angeles. We're going to shift the focus of our conversation to the Bears next. Mark Grody joins us, the ace reporter for six seventy to score. First, I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors, our buddy Jeff Bukovic. When it Ooh. comes to being treated like royalty, make sure to contact Nationwide Agent Jeff Bukovic. He'll handle all your insurance needs, auto, home, and business. You can reach him at jeffbook.com. That's jeffbuk.com. Phone number 847-825-4783. And the jingle, always ready to go. Nationwide is on your side. <laughs> Sing it, baby. We, we look forward to seeing Jeff Bukovic at the United Center very soon. The, the season is coming faster than you know it, but we're going to talk football next. Mark Grody joins us on the other side. Time to talk football. They gave me the Hot Sauce podcast, and nobody better to bring in than our good friend Mark Grody. You hear him on 670 The Score. He's their Ace Bears reporter. He's also been doing a lot of show hosting, and we're taping on a Monday evening. And to show you what a dedicated guy Mark Grody is, he did the morning show today. 
Did you get a nap in before <laughs> you joined us? I did. I got a good nap. I got a, I mean, like a, almost like a three hour nap in. So my energy is high and I do look, I roll out of bed talking bears for you guys. Okay. Well, we we definitely anytime, appreciate it. I, <laughs> no, Hey, anytime you guys want to talk bears, I will pick up my phone. Absolutely. I did that show once Mark. I, I filled in, I work with uh, Mike Mulligan and uh dustin rhodes the producer called me back you know a little while later he goes would you like to do the morning show again i'm like hell no <laughs> i was like a zombie for two days because you know i'm used to working late you know I, I work three to 11 when i was working full time and and doing that morning show almost killed me what time does it start uh f five right doesn't it start at five yeah well now it did start at five it actually starts at five thirty now okay and is that the one when mully, probably, mully was doing mully and haw yeah Oh, I remember doing that one time. Yeah. They brought me in there. I was yeah. like, oh, this is the last time I'm doing this shit. <laughs> See, uh, just call. like me. No. We're, we're, we're night owls. We no, really and it was dark night. outside. It was <laughs> yeah. like, man, I was yeah. like, and I had to come from the north. So I had to leave like yeah. at four yeah. or something. I was like, never again. <laughs> Hell no. Because those dudes are my boys, you know. Yeah. Uh, Mullen's my guy. So I said, yeah, I'll come down. There's no big yeah. deal. And once I, once I had to get up like 3.30 to get ready to go, I'm like, hey, never doing this again. Mother, I love you. I love you, mother. Hey, but I can't do that anymore. Grody, the funniest what, what, thing about that that day was it was it was back in 2010 with the great NBA free agency, and they had me come in in July because they wanted to talk basketball. So yeah. we did the show. We're talking about the Bulls are going to meet with LeBron. They're going to meet with Wade. They're going to meet with Bosh. And so I, I go home. I take a nap, and I wake up. And all of a sudden, I see on ESPN that the Bulls are going to have a second meeting with Dwayne Wade. I'm like, what the hell? Did I dream all this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's pretty amazing. When I wake up for the morning show, I just, at this point, I cry just a little bit. I cry <laughs> just because it's, the whole concept is just painful. Like, especially when it gets cooler outside and you're doing the mornings, it's just so painful and lonely and scary. And yeah. then once you're in the pool, it's fine. You get used to the water, and then you're just talking sports. <laughs> That's the process I go through. Well, let's talk some sports. Obviously, the city of Chicago is going gaga over two drives led by Caleb Williams. And to be honest, he showed the full arsenal. He had a scramble. He had an improvised flip shovel pass to DeAndre Swift. He had a couple of really good strikes to pass on the run to Cole Komet. He basically showed it all in two drives. Yeah, which I thought was amazing because, and, and I've mentioned this, that I, you know, I've seen the majority of the Bears practices out at Hallis Hall. This is the best that Caleb Williams has looked in all of those, you know, those dozen practices or so, and more if you count the OTAs just with his ability to put together consistency on the drives. And as you said, Mark, show us the whole repertoire. I don't know that my expectations were that high for this game for him. Not only was he just playing, playing good in the two drives, and that's what we're evaluating him on, is two drives. He was good, but then he, yeah, he had the third and 13 pass to DJ Moore. He had the 42-yard little whatever you call it flip to – to DeAndre Swift, he had the brilliant play down the sideline to Cole Komet off the bootleg. So it was just, it was almost too perfect. Not, you know, he would, there were a couple of moments that could have been better for him, but in terms of a debut and the anticipation and the, quite frankly, the expectation <laughs> in a preseason context, he delivered hugely. Well, Mark, one thing I, I looked at, it seems like he has a grasp of the offense. Like he, he's, processing information very quickly. He's reading defenses um, very quickly for a rookie. Um, that's the one thing I, I took away from that. Some of the decision-making that he made, you know, some young quarterbacks rush and they, they hit the first person they see, which turns out to be a turnover or they force a bad pass. He looked like he got through his progressions very nicely, knew where he wanted to go with the ball when it was time to deliver the ball. Did you see the same thing? I did, and at one specific example of that, Stacy was on the first drive, his first big play, the third and 13, where he zips the ball into DJ Moore, rewind it a little bit, and you will see his two outlet guys, Harry Blasson game and Travis Homer, wide open, wide open, but they were well shy of the sticks. Caleb Williams, to your point, had the poise, the presence of mind to to not be too tantalized or be too conservative 
and actually throw to the sticks where he finds DJ Moore. So I thought that was an, an unbelievable example. And that was one of the things that was difficult for Justin Fields ultimately was the going through the progression. The first, if the first read was there and good and hot, he would take it. And then more times than not, he would have difficulty getting to that to that next level and taking off sometimes. But from Caleb Williams, at least in this game, um, we did see that poise. We saw it a lot, and you can give specific examples. And he goes on the road against a very good Buffalo Bills team who was playing their starters on defense. And I heard Dan Orlovsky say this morning that they gave him like four different defensive looks. It wasn't just vanilla. They were disguising their coverages even in the one quarter they were out there. And the play that really impressed me was the one where he did the pump fake and threw it down the sideline to commit. I, I just was picturing if it's Justin Fields, no, no knock on Justin because it was Stacy and I are big fans, but he would have checked down, he would have thrown it to the short guy, and, and they would have, they would have had you know, a modest gain. He said, no, I'm, I'm going to pump fake it. I'm going to go down. The, and that was a tough throw. That, had, that was a tight window, and he just zipped it right into to Komet on the run. It was a major league play. I mean, that was just some big-time stuff. And it, again, yeah, it totally encapsulated what Caleb Williams is about and things that he did at, at USC. You know, the touchdown over check down. You know, that was one of his mottos, I'm sure, at USC, because that's what you saw him do, trying to, to force the issue downfield. And like, it's interesting. One of the things that I wondered out loud early on, asked the questions of the coaches and asked the question of Caleb Williams. I never, I didn't necessarily ever get a satisfactory answer. But the question I kept asking was, how long will it take in the development of Caleb Williams before we start to see the USC stuff? And, and I mean the throwing downfield, the big play ability and everybody's been kind of shy you know we're taking it step by step but when you put this man on the field we're seeing it already that right. okay maybe you answered my question right there Caleb Williams that is you are going to look downfield and be conservative be smart when you have to but that's how you become an elite quarterback is ultimately is throwing down the field and he ain't elite yet not there but that we saw some great stuff well, and the one thing that you that you see, he has extreme confidence in his ability, um, whether he's standing in the pocket or whether he's rolling out. There, it seems like they're doing everything they can to play to his strengths in these first this first preseason game that he played in. Let's put him in where he's comfortable. Let's let him let him get outside the pocket. And a couple of the Bears practices that I saw, he was rolling out of the pocket a lot and being able to look downfield and hit guys on the run. He threw a dart to to somebody with like forty five yard in the corner of the end zone on a, on a rollout. I was like, wow, this guy's got an arm. He can throw him and it's accurate. Like he, he has a, he's very accurate on the rollouts, which is like, unless it's Patrick Mahomes, you don't see a lot of guys that can throw darts like that as be so accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I think that one too, I think the 45 yarder was to, to DJ Moore actually, now that I think about it, and that was earlier on in camp and that was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is that, we're, we're seeing all of the things that it takes for a quarterback to be really good. The, the pocket presence that we're talking about, some of the, the stuff that you have to do, whether the ball's in your hand or not. But once the ball is in his hands, we are seeing the physical gifts as well. I mean, I don't think anybody in Chicago wants a guy who is a game manager at this point. I mean, the Bears <laughs> fans want every little piece of it. So, so getting beyond the mechanics, which obviously he had to pass that test and he is passing it so far, but ultimately what you're wanting to see is the, the special stuff, the physical stuff, that throw and the poise, and then just the confidence that he already seems to have with his, with his teammates that seem to believe in him so far. And just to drive the point home that the Bears finally have a quarterback, it was kind of ironic to see poor Mitchell Trubisky on the other side uh, kind of struggling he almost had about three passes picked off he's now backing up Josh Allen which means he'll never play in Buffalo and I don't want to talk about Mitchell Trubisky but the uh, the Bears defense is what I want to get to they sacked Buffalo quarterbacks eight times it looks like they might have found something in this Austin Booker the fifth round draft pick out of Kansas he had two and a half sacks by himself god he was fun to watch he was fun to watch the two and a half sacks like you said I think the first sack that he had, he was unblocked. 
And so then Buffalo's like got their acts together, like, okay, 94 over here. <laughs> and he, even then, when he was blocked, when he would miss the quarterback the first time, one of his sacks was he was blocked, he was pushed to the side, quarterback dips into the pocket, takes a couple steps forward. Oh, there's Austin Booker right on yeah. his ass, get making the sack. So he's got a legit motor. He's athletic as hell. I mean, you see him. He, you know, he's this big, tall, really long legs. I mean, everybody keeps saying, well, he's got to put on a little bit of weight. I think that that's a little bit overrated these days, like with some of the quickness that is used. And the Bears had, you know, Leonard Floyd was a guy that they drafted, I think, number seven overall in a previous regime. And, you know, he, he has had a nice career as well. So, yeah, while you do maybe have to put a little bit of weight on Booker, I, I would just say this is one to watch. I'm still not sure if I expect that Booker is going to be an impact man in the regular season, but he's got my attention, and I think he's got a lot of people's attention. Well, I'm going to tell you something. He looked impressive. Yeah. Like, he, if you saw him in Kansas because they played against Oklahoma, uh, oh, yeah. he, he, gets to the, he gets to the quarterback in a hurry. And, and when you talk about motor, that's what you want out of your defensive end. If, you, if, if he's able to get on the field and you put him on the opposite side of Sweat, and, and have those two guys rushing the quarterback and putting pressure on the quarterback, and then you got the ball hawks in the back. The Bears' defense is going to yeah. be very impressive this season. Yeah, and then, I mean, just think about the the defensive line in that game. Booker dominated. Zach Pickens had a sack, and I thought looked good in general. Uh, Daniel Hardy had, I think, I don't know what they gave him officially, a sack and a half at least, maybe two. Khalid Kareem. Looked like an absolute stud, one of the guys that they traded for last year in the preseason. Uh, Dominique Robinson, the third-year yep. kind of defensive end project who was converted from an offensive position, he had a TFL yesterday. So there was some heartening things going on. And, you know, Ryan Poles did say when we were asking early on in camp about the need for another pass rusher opposite of Montez Sweat, you know, so everybody's like, oh, you're going to bring in Yannick Ngakwe. You get to sign somebody. And he said, we like our guys. We, we like our guys first and foremost. Um, you know, and he didn't discount the idea. But I, there was a lot of eye rolls at that point, including by me. Like, okay, come on. You're the guy that you have inside in the house. And, well, so far, he is showing that they may have some in-house talent. So, yeah, that was a good day for the, for the defensive line, the secondary, all really all levels. I guess the only concern uh, this at this far into training camp is on the offensive line. They've had some injuries up front. It looks like Nate Davis is one of those guys that really doesn't want to play football anymore. He comes up with any <laughs> any reason he can think of not to play. Uh, I think Tevin Jenkins is solid. I think their tackles are pretty good. But you know, you got those two interior spots you got to worry about. Is that, is that going to be a, a source of concern, especially with a, a rookie quarterback? It's a big source of concern as far as I am concerned. I will say this first, though. I thought the offensive line looked pretty good in the for in those two drives for Caleb Williams. I actually did. Um, Coleman Shelton was the starting center, and he's been playing a ton of. He's really been their center for the last two plus weeks. So he, I thought he looked good, and it seemed like the exchange with Caleb Williams was solid. Um, you had a guy named Matt Pryor playing right guard. He comported himself well. It was a good. I mean, there were many times where Caleb Williams had time to get back to the the original genesis of the question and the concern that exists is one, one of them now has arisen and that is ryan bates got injured last week in practice he did not play in this game um i i said prior looked good but i'd much have a, rather have ryan bates at right guard once the season begins and it's sounding like the the aforementioned nate davis that his injury is worse than originally thought and i can't imagine him being ready to begin the season, the way things have been going, the lack of practice, the injuries that have existed, the fact that everybody has, well, Matt Eberflus and Shane Waldron kind of challenging him and talking about potential competition at that spot. So it's, it's really a shame though, too, because he was supposed to be the guy. They gave him a three year, $30 million contract, had some legit personal stuff that went on last year. Uh, I totally understood that and had sympathy for him, but it just seems like there, he has not been available to the Bears since they signed him. 
Well, I tell you what. I mean, this team looks like it's going to win 10 games or more. I, I just, I mean, my biggest concern, though, Mark, is when they when the season starts and the offensive line looks like the it, it looks like it may be the the weak link of mm-hmm. the whole team. What's going to happen when teams come out and they just put blitz packages together? And you, know, you haven't seen it in preseason so much. I mean, they, they haven't you haven't seen it a lot, but you're going to see it when the regular season comes. And then you know, Caleb Williams is going to have to make adjustments. He's going to have to he's going to have to be you know process even things more quicker then he's having to do it now. Yeah. I mean, it just, just because at forget who he even is, take the name away. Caleb Williams is a rookie quarterback. Yep. Teams are going to be bringing the noise against him. Here's the good news. I thought we saw some of how that will be handled with all the play action with the, the bootleg to um, the, the play to Cole Komet. We saw him getting out of the pocket a lot. Shane Waldron, as we talked about earlier, has done a good job of adapting this so far, adapting this offense to Caleb Williams. So he will have that in mind. Um, The hope will be that the offense will be sturdy by then, obviously. But I do think that, and this organization, and Shane Waldron, it's, it's only his first year, but this organization has to have learned from the start that Justin Fields had where they made him vulnerable enough to the point where he was sacked 11 times in his first start in that Cleveland game. And it, it's all, to me, that's fair to reference. You know, I know that's in the past. Bears don't like hearing about that kind of stuff. New way of doing business. But for now, that's our reference point. So wh- whatever they do, they've got to make sure that they do it differently than they did with Justin Fields. Hey, before we let you go, I want to get your impressions on the first episode of Hard Knocks. Obviously, you've been at every practice. You've seen those camera crews getting in the middle of everything, trying to capture that great sound. I, I loved, I love Flus in the barber chair. Uh, I yeah. thought the, the DJ Moore contract thing was good. Uh, the Canadian lineman stripping down was was funny, and uh, and the Bulls intro for Caleb Williams or Ray Clay that was pretty cool. Yeah, well, I'll, okay, well, I'm gonna start right there just for you guys. The Ray Clay thing, well, I understood it. And I got it. I did not, uh, me personally, I did not like the repurposing of Ray Clay. Like that, those 90s Bulls teams, like you guys, Stacey, it meant a lot to me. Like, because I just got to be a fan at that time. And that's Ray Clay did the Bulls. I don't, I understand what they were doing, but I personally, and a lot of people liked it. But I was like, oh, no, no, don't <laughs> no. don't conflate no. the 90s Bulls with Caleb Williams. It's a lot yet. of pressure. Am I right? Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's like having a great movie and then you try to remake it yeah. with different actors. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you just ruined it. Yeah. You ruined yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, let it yeah. go. No, completely. I also thought, I, I, I mean, I thought that they, they seemed to love Matt Eberflus. You know, oh, yeah, like yeah. He just shined through the whole thing. And then the party that he threw... You know, the Nick Saban conversation really gave him credibility than standing behind the quarterback and giving tips yeah. on offense. It was almost like the – Who's this guy? To, yeah. To, to respect him. What's yeah. that? It's who it's took like, over Matt yeah, who, Who's this mind. guy? It doesn't yeah. seem like the guy we yeah. knew his first two years. He got, he had the, he got the, the hair done. He yeah. got the beard. He had the beard going. Yeah. I was like, who is this guy? It's like one of those old Scooby Doo when they pull yeah, a mask yeah. off it's and it's somebody else. else. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what it might it might be somebody else in there. It's old man Eberflus. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That was funny though when they actually god, showed him. Really is. It was it was good the way they did it though with him in the barber chair and he told the whole story about his wife and, and daughter wanted to have wanted to have a new look. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he seems yeah, no, he seemed no. like he's embraced personality yeah. now. Like like before, yeah. it just seemed like you know the team was not doing very well, and he really couldn't do what he's doing now. Yeah. And I think now that he knows there's security in his job, you know, and he's got an offensive coordinator now that is a is a well established offensive coordinator, and it looks like he's is a great hire. Uh, maybe there, he's relaxed now. There is a certain amount of that in his game this year. He has been better with the media in terms of personality and maybe being a little bit more open with us with all of the questions that we fire at him um, a little bit more personable with the media 
So, and yeah, and I do think, and I always talk about this, like I, I think Matt Eberflus was so thrilled to have gotten his job back this year because there was, there was a case to be made that he could have lost his gig and it would have been like being left behind at the party. It's like, oh, Caleb is coming in. Oh, Roma Dunze is coming in. Oh, you're going to lock in DJ Moore. Oh, the defense is good, and I got to leave. So I think he's relieved that he gets to show what he might be able to do with a real roster just like the rest of this team. Yeah, yeah, because they could have went after Harbaugh coming off a national championship, a former Bears quarterback known for developing quarterbacks everywhere he's been. So that was that was a show of faith to keep Eberflus. And I love the old video of him playing college football with the big shoulder pads. He's a headhunting linebacker. Yeah. That was pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think it was uh, Tremaine Edmonds who said upon seeing the way he played football, saying, that's what we call a one-gap linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guarantee, I guarantee you, though, that he got the respect of his team that he did play. Absolutely. That he actually got out there. They probably some of them probably didn't even know he played until they saw that. You're probably right. And he was a grinder of a player. Yep. And that's why he probably became a coach and all of that. So yeah, I think it does give a certain amount of cred to yep. the blues. Yep. Yep. Because there's a lot of guys out there that's never been in the trenches, never played, and they've been guys that are, you know, super smart and they, mm -hmm. you know, and, and players are like, well, you never played. You don't know what we are going through. You don't know the what we're feeling. And so I know that's like that in basketball. Like in basketball, if you don't know, if you don't know what you're talking about, players know very quickly. Like mm -hmm. we're not following this guy. Yeah, like we're not yeah. following right. this guy. You're always gonna have blind spots if you haven't actually played the game. That's that's what I've noticed about those guys. Yep. Yep. Well, Groats, thanks for bringing the energy after working your uh, five thirty to nine shift. We <laughs> we appreciate it very much. Uh, try to get some rest tonight, and we look forward to visiting with you throughout the season. Our Bears insider, Mark Grody. Yeah, thanks, thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. All right, Hi, Mark. Groats, thanks. That was great. Mark yeah. Grody, our guest. Hey, I tell you what, is our Bears insider, we can ask for a better guy. Like he, he has his stuff down, and we enjoy having him on the show. He's big time now. You know, oh, he's yeah. got a radio show now. I like to attribute the "Give me the hot sauce." We make stars out of people. <laughs> we have people on our show, then they go somewhere else and they, they become stars. Maybe we'll get him some of that Danny Parkins money. Yeah, hey, you know what? Hey, Danny <laughs> Parkins got there, man. I ain't hating on you, bro. Oh yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah, you deserve it. You do good job here in Chicago. You will be missed. Uh, anytime you get an opportunity like that, it's tough to it's tough to turn down. And uh, if you missed that story, the news came out today. It was reported by the Sun Times that uh, Danny Parkins, who hosts afternoons with Matt Spiegel to score is going to be leaving to take over a part of the morning show at FS1. So it's a great opportunity. Yeah, for there's, yeah. I mean, you know, Fox is trying to move in. You know, Skip Bayless is gone now, so yeah. uh, they need to feel that's a huge hole, yeah. you know. And uh, that, that show went downhill when they when they, when Shannon Sharp left. They should have, right, right. they, you know, uh, FS1 should have stepped in and, and made those guys reconcile and get that back on Cause, order. Because Shannon wouldn't take any of Skip Bayless's junk. You know? No, he, he no. Fire right back no, at him. He fired right back at him. It's like, don't skip him a Hall of Famer. We talk about Skip. Skip. Skip, let me tell you something. I played 14 years, Skip. Put your glasses back on. Skip, let me tell you something. I played 14 years. And I was a tight end. I played Hunt. I, you can't discredit my career. Now he's sparring with uh, Stephen A. So the $25 million. Stephen A. Man. Stephen, Stephen A. Stephen, let me tell you something, Stephen A. He good. That boy good, Stephen A. That boy good. <laughs> Shannon, shout out to you out there, boy. I love you, boy. You want to have Shannon Sharp uh, sell some hot sauce? Oh, I mean, hot usually, sauce. Usually we have oh. Christopher Walken doing it. Oh. oh, hot sauce. Here we go. This is Shannon Sharp. <laughs> Are you looking to score the hottest sauce in the game? Well, you want to look. We got all the sauce you need, and it's hot. From Chicago Fire 1871, which I love, Skip. Skip, skip, <laughs> skip. I love it. The hottest bunch to our king's favorite, St. Pat's Verde. Ooh. <laughs> It's some good stuff. Give me the hot sauce as you got you covered. Stop by. Skip, skip, listen. listen I'm a Hall of Famer, Skip. Give me the hot sauce.com and tell us Shannon Sharp sent you and use the code KING21 to get 21% off because I'm a Hall of Famer, Skip. I'm a Hall of Famer. <laughs> I got 14 years with them, a Bronco. I play for nobody else but the Broncos and the Ravens. Give me my credit. 
And Put your glasses back on. We have to uh, <laughs> give you the disclaimer. Celebrity voice in person. <laughs> no walking fire no. today. Yeah, no walking no, no, fire, no, baby. No. It's Shannon oh, Sharp. Shannon Sharp, baby. <laughs> Shannon Sharp, I'm here, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're coming back to wrap up the show. Give me the hot sauce. Rolls on. Skip. We really appreciate Mark Grody joining us after having the early wake-up call. Time for the show where we answer questions and comments from some of your viewers that have been watching on YouTube. These are all Bulls-related questions. Uh, the first one comes from J.K. Stacy, who do you think is going to take the biggest leap on the Bulls this year? Uh, if, if I'm going to go with my bet, I, I'd go Patrick Williams. I think the opportunity is going to be there for him to play a lot of minutes if he can stay healthy. Um, I, I expect him now to show people why he was the fourth pick in the draft and show people that he can, you know, put some games together and string some consistency. And I think he's going to have a big year. We're skip ahead to the uh, third question coming from Zark at Zark Tweets. He says, Billy Donovan loves Lonzo Ball. If he's healthy enough to play, this could definitely happen, which brings me to a point I've brought up in the past. How is Billy going to manage this rotation? There are too many players who will need to play. But maybe that's a good thing for Lonzo if he can ease his way back in. I know you talked about this on a previous episode. Well, I, I think they're going to bring Lonzo back slowly. I think he's going to probably be on that 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 minute restrictions. He's not probably not going to play back to back this year, um, and it's going to be slow up until probably the the first of the year. And I think you know there's a lot of teams are going to want to see his availability if he's healthy. You know he might be a piece the Bulls may try to part with and get and be able to get some picks back. Um, he's playing five on five now. Yeah, he's playing five on five. He's looked great this summer, you know, compared to Mark when we, we saw him when he was hurt and he had all those surgeries on his knee and they couldn't find out what it was. They didn't know it was meniscus tear. Was it nerve damage? And they finally found out what it was. They operated on. This is the first surgery that they've ever done. So he, he is going to be uh, a reference point to other NBA players or football players that may want to have this same surgery. If they see him come back from this and, and look like old Lonzo, there's going to be a lot of people now are going to be lined up to have that surgery. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, uh, uh, Brandon Paul. Not, who, who, who was it uh, in Portland? The kid in Portland hurt his knee. Brandon Roy. Brandon Roy. Yeah. Brandon Roy hurt his knee. If they would have had this surgery, years. if they would have had this surgery, that kid would have been a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Last question comes from uh, Rayon Huke, 5201. He says, these guys are crazy. Kobe's the best player on this team. He should be the one playing whenever and wherever he needs to. Everyone else can adjust to him. So we got a big Kobe White fan out there. And and Stacy's talked about the fact that he's made that big leap. He could be borderline all star if he if he takes another jump this year. Well, it's it's gonna be interesting to see because Zach will be back. And then what is it you got you you know, you have Josh Giddy who, you know, is gonna be the, the point guard. And so what do, what do the Bulls do? Do they do they put Zach Levine in that DeMar DeRozan role? They play him at small forward out of position to allow Kobe to play too? Because you don't want to bring Kobe off the bench, and you don't want to bring Zach Giddy off the bench. So it, it's going to be some interesting thing. You remember, and, and they're really heavy at guard. I mean, you still got Io there. Yeah. You know, Javon Carter, who you know, they gave a free agent contract to, didn't get the minutes he And Lonzo. Know, and then Lonzo. So yeah. they're... There's some. There's a lot of guards. That's six and, guards. And six guards That's trying to problem. find <laughs> trying to find minutes. And you know Zach's going to eat up minutes, and Kobe's going to eat up minutes, and Giddy's going. to. Those are going to be your three primary guards right there. And then Zoe coming in, and it's not if Zoe was 100 percent healthy and they really wanted to push him, Zoe would be in that mix as well. So I think what you're going to see with Lonzo is you're going to see him probably play 15 to 20 minutes, maybe two quarters out of a four quarter game. And that's going to go on until he starts to to get ramped up, and they start to ramp him up a little bit more. But it's it's going to be Billy's got got a lot of lot of uh, lot of options this year. Yeah, and the forward spot's going to be tough too because they'll probably start Zach and Giddy in, along with Kobe White. So you're going to have a three guard lineup, and then you got Patrick Williams. You know, Bazellus is going to play. So where does that yes. leave Dale and Terry and Julian Phillips? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you something, man. I mean, you know. Uh, it's a good problem to have. I mean, if you're Billy, you, you, you're you going to have to have some small ball lineups to get some of these guys some minutes. Um, you know, the best guys play. You know, I mean, that's just how it is in the NBA. I know everybody, you know, this is a league of, it's a business league, and the best guys are playing. So whoever your best rotation is, you know, we got a lot of mix and match guys. You know, you got a lot of guys you can say, okay, I can play them at the two, I can play them at the three, I can play this guy at the four and the five, I can go small ball five, you know. Um, but I, I think the biggest thing is is that you got Vooch coming back and you got, you know, Zach Levine coming back. And that puts you in a situation where you're gonna win more games than you're gonna lose. Mm -hmm. And this is the year that 
you know, if you want to lose, this is the year you want to lose because this year's draft, there's there's about 10 to 12 kids that are supposed to be franchise-changing players. And if you're the Bulls, you don't want to miss out on an opportunity. But if you're a team that's in the a top five team and you're you're better off than what everybody thought, that's that's another thing. Yeah, we're still about six weeks away from the start of training camp, so the guys will get a chance to rest and take their vacations and then be ready to roll in September. Time to wrap it up. Before we do, we always give us uh, give you something on what we've been watching on various streaming services and cable. Stacy finished up a Finish series up. that Whispers and I had already watched on Apple Plus, and it was a really good watch. America, if you haven't seen Presumed Innocent, please watch it. I'm not going to tell you anything. Yeah. All I'm going to tell you is it's your, your whole perception is going to change every show. You're going to think, is this person, that person, this person, that person? It's like, it's like all over the place. You're all over mm-hmm. the place. And you're not gonna guess at the end. You're and as a viewer, end. you're kind of riding that roller coaster. You yeah, really get emotional. I felt like I was in. A, I felt thing. like I was on trial. I know. Because yeah. I mean, you imagine being being you know somebody trying to convict you of a crime that you didn't commit, mm-hmm. and you and it points that you did it because you were you were all where where you weren't supposed to be. All the circumstances. All the circumstances yeah. point to you, yeah. and you have to prove you know you have to prove yourself that you're you're innocent. And man, I tell you what, I would not want to be on trial like that. That's, yeah, that's ooh, your life in the balance. Man, no, your career, your career possibly even ruined. You're, you, this guy's a, a, a prosecutor, yeah. big time prosecutor. Now he finds himself in the situation where he's doing what he does every day. So family is involved. Your family gets torn up by all yeah. this, and just oh man. Yeah, if you have Apple Plus, definitely check it out. Yeah, it's a it. really well done series. Uh, I finished up the third season of The Outlaws. This is the one that Christopher Walken oh, was, there he in, is. was in the first <laughs> two seasons. He just makes a cameo in season three. This is a, about a bunch of uh, basically outcast misfits. Uh, this is set in England, and they all are assigned to do community service for various uh, misdemeanor crimes they've committed. And they get kind of mixed up with a drug lord and a murder, and the thing gets off the rails. But it, it's got a very strong comedic tone to it. It's a lot of fun to watch. And Christopher Walken's in it the first two seasons, but only does a cameo. In Anytime you got a chance to see Christopher Walken, you might as well go ahead and right. watch that show because <laughs> he's gonna bring some kind of some kind of some kind of like element to it that you go, man, I'm glad I watched it. And Hard Knocks, of course, the second episode comes up Tuesday night on Max, and I'm sure they'll have all kinds of surprises in that. So that's gonna wrap it up for the show. We want to thank Mark Grody for coming on. Hold it. Yep. Windy City. Yeah, that's right. We yes. That Hey, I want to say shout out to my man, my man, uh, Mike Amaroth. He's at uh, he's at Mariano's right now buying a whole chicken. Yeah, you know he you know he has picnics in the back of his truck. I just want to shout out. He got a little bed back there too. He can sleep back there. Oh no, yeah, he's big time, man. He's big time. He, we I had him this weekend. I had to go to I had a birthday party to go to out in uh, Mokina, and uh, Mike gave Mike was my driver out there, and uh, me and my girl we went out there, and uh, uh, he has a he has a fan. He has a really big fan that really thinks Mike's cute and sexy. Oh, how yeah, about that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hey, and, and Jan, shout out to Aunt Jan out there. <laughs> Toronto, Jan Toronto, she she likes Mike. She thinks he's cute. Mike's running away from her. He's hiding. He doesn't want to come in. He's, you know, he's, he's got double man twins. You, know, you got double yeah. twins. You can't beat that. <laughs> so, America, we the City Limousine provides championship service. Making a reservation is easy. It's a slam dunk. Let Windy City break the full court pressure of traffic and get you to your destination and style it on time. Contact them at 847-916-9300. That's 847-916-9300. Or go see them at WindyCityLimos.com, and it's the limousine service I take for the last five years, and they're the only people I allow drive to drive me anywhere in Chicago. And I think it's the service that Shannon Sharp uses every time. Oh, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, you get with the city, baby. I'm telling you, 14 years, I'm a Hall of Famer skip. I, I take with the city anywhere I go because I need to be, I need to be driving and, and styling the class because right. I'm stylish. Be safe out there. The Democratic Convention <laughs> is going to roll into town this weekend. We'll have a brand new show next week. All Always. Full of surprises as usual. I think Whispers is going to be back, but you never yes. can tell. Drive home safe in Chicago, BB. Thanks to the crew. We appreciate it, guys. Hey, what's up? This is Stacey King. And I'm Timmy Whispers. Of Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. Each week, make sure you join us. Timmy Whispers, what do they need to hit? They need to hit like and subscribe so they get all the notifications and news from our podcast. That boy is sweet. Just make sure <laughs> when the video's over, click to the left, and you'll hear our previous videos for the previous week, and have some fun, because we'd love to have fun on Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs>